today we are going to the uh, see the osteology of the mandible we'll see the interesting parts and the easy bone to remember and we'll see the first part this is the ramus of the mandible and this is the body of the mandible between the ramus and the body you have the angle of the mandible so this part is the angle of the mandible right so again i repeat this is the ramus of the mandible this is the body of the mandible and this is called angle of the mandible right then next thing is you have something called as a projection this is like a condyle so it is called condylar process and this is called coronoid process condylar process coronoid process two things are here and then in between you have a nice notch called mandibular notch so condylar process coronoid process mandibular notch this is also called as head of the mandible because it has to articulate with the skull and forms the temporomandibular joint so it is called head of the mandible and this part is called the neck of the mandible and this is called the notch and this is called the lateral surface and this one if you see inside this is called the medial surface look at this can you see the grooves and surfaces this is called the medial surface so this area is the medial surface of the mandible right and then if you see here this is the alveolar sockets so this is the inferior alveolar process the superior alveolar process is with the skull maxilla okay so this is the inferior alveolar process right then if you see from the lateral aspect from the coronoid process you could see some line that is coming obliquely so this line is called oblique line oblique line of the mandible and this is called as mental foramen and this is called as mental spur protuberance okay so this is called mental protuberance so this are all menti this is our chin next thing is first we will see the bony prominences then we will see what is the special what are the structures passing through that then i will go to the in, inner surface of the mandible this inner surface of the mandible only lot of things are there okay ready so we will keep the inner surface like this and then we will see right there is a notch i said already there is a mandibular, mandibular notch and here you have a nice foramen which is going inside this is called mandibular foramen so this foramen is called mandibular foramen this is called mandibular notch and this is called mandibular foramen inside the mandibular foramen you will be having one important nerve this is alveoli which part of the alveoli i said inferior alveolar superior alveolar already it is with the skull in the along with the maxilla bone so this is inferior alveolar so what is the nerve possibility which you know is passing to this it is inferior alveolar nerve right so inferior alveolar nerve before entering into the mandibular foramen it gives a branch over here so what is that nerve what is that branch we'll see now if you see the interior you will be having some spine like structures this is called genial tubercles superior genial tubercle and inferior genial tubercles are here superior genial tubercle is up so what is the bone uh, what is the organ present here this area is for the tongue so the superior genial tubercles gives attachment to the genio glossae glossae means tongue from the genio to glossae it is called genio glossal and here next bone is your hyoid bone so genio to hyoid is genio hyoid so you have the upper and lower genial tubercles the upper genial tubercle gives attachment to genio glossus lower genial tubercle gives attachment to genio hyoid very good two muscles we have completed then we will go to this area beneath if you see this area can you see this area we have a nice fossa this fossa is for the digastric muscle which digastric muscle anterior belly of digastric because both the sides you have the anterior belly of digastric will be going and you have your submental triangle here right so this is the anterior belly of digastric attachment this is the digastric fossa <coughs> next if you see this way you could see nice foramen and then in this foramen we could see one structure right nicely you can see a groove over here what is the name of the groove this groove is called mylohyoid groove what is this line mylohyoid line mylohyoid line gives attachment to which muscle mylohyoid muscle what is this mylohyoid groove what is the content of the mylohyoid groove mylohyoid nerve and mylohyoid vessels now now my question is what is the nerve lying entering into this groove this foramen don't say mandibular nerve mandibular nerve will not be coming here mandibular nerve already we know about that foramen ovale only through that it comes out immediately after coming out it divides into two branches so the one branch will be going down 
uh, <coughs> anterior branch and the posterior branch the and sorry so it is come anterior and posterior so one of the branches will be coming down that is your inferior alveolar so don't say mandibular nerve in mandibular foramen this foramen though the name is mandibular nerve only the branch of the mandibular nerve is entering through that that is your inferior alveolar nerve before entering into the foramen it gives a branch to this uh, mylohyoid muscle so that is called nerve to mylohyoid so the nerve to mylohyoid is lying over here then next is this line mylohyoid line already we know that that is mylohyoid muscle is here so both the sides mylohyoid muscle they come in the midline and they attach to the midline raphe this mylohyoid muscle is otherwise called as oral diaphragm because it forms the floor of the submental triangle over here right so that is called as oral diaphragm next muscle genial tubercles we know mylohyoid we know and then this line divides the in the inner of part of the mandible into upper half upper part and the lower half here you have the sublingual fossa for the sublingual salivary gland here in the lower part we have a fossa for the submandibular salivary gland everybody knows the submandibular salivary gland i said this is the ramus and this is the body between the ramus of the body and the body this is the angle of the mandible can you see this roughened area in angle of the mandible that is for the attachment of one muscle that is the muscle of mastication you have four muscles of the mastication number one is <coughs> we have four muscles number 1 is lateral pterygoid number 2 is medial pterygoid number 3 is masseter number 4 is um temporalis okay these are the four muscles of mastication so we use your common sense and tell us which one is medial so medial side we are talking about this is a medial side so obviously this angle medial inner part of the angle of the mandible gives attachment to which one comes in medial name medial pterygoid so we know the attachment of the medial pterygoid in a mandible right very good and then if you see there is a nice space in the this area this area is called head of the mandible here you have already see it is colored by green color with the green color chalk so this area you have a nice fossa this fossa is called as pterygoid fossa so already one muscle by the name pterygoid over who is left out lateral pterygoid so this fovea is called this fossa is called pterygoid fovea in this fovea only we have the attachment of lateral pterygoid muscle so this lateral pterygoid muscle here the, i said this forms a joint called temporomandibular joint <coughs> with the temporal bone above so in between this joint you have a articular disc over here so this lateral pterygoid muscle will be attached to the articular disc called so this is a very important muscle which muscle send fibers to the articular disc which muscle is here lateral pterygoid so lateral pterygoid only it is attached to the articular disc this is number 1 number 2 this is called neck of the mandible neck of the mandible which nerve lies around the neck of the mandible see this area is near the ear okay so this is called okay this area understood this is the ear and this is the mandible so this is called the temporomandibular joint so this area is near the ear so what is a nerve you could see here near the ear ear is called auricle this area is called temporal so what is the name of the nerve auriculotemporal nerve so the same thing we are seeing here so here is the nerve auriculotemporal nerve this is also a mcq so number 1 mcq is articular disc what is a muscle attached to the articular disc lateral pterygoid second mcq is what is this fossa pterygoid fovea this is called as pterygoid fovea which muscle is inserted into the pterygoid fovea is answer is lateral pterygoid number 3 what is the nerve lying along the neck of the mandible that is your auriculotemporal nerve <coughs> next question next important question is what we used usually we ask is look at this this is the this is the foramen that is called inferior alveolar nerve is passing through that foramen and this foramen is called mandibular foramen look at this there is a shelf like plate shelf like plate is plate of a bone is just uh, uh, forming the boundary of the mandibular foramen this shelf like projection is called as lingula what is the attachment in lingula which ligament what are the two ligaments attached to the mandible this is called sphenomandibular ligament sphenomin from the spine of the sphenoid it will be coming 
from the spine of the sphenoid spine of the sphenoid is attached in the base of the skull near the styloid process we have a spine that is from the sphenoid bone spine of sphenoid from here to here this is the lingula so spine of the sphenoid to the lingula is the attachment of sphenomandibular ligament what the question is asked is between the sphenomandibular ligament and the um, neck of the mandible what is the nerve going through that auriculo temporal nerve number two next question is this is the mandibular uh, mylohyoid uh, groove you only told me mylohyoid nerve is here so now next question is sphenomandibular ligament is pierced by which nerve so which nerve is nearby mylohyoid nerve so what could be the answer yeah mylohyoid nerve is piercing the sphenomandibular ligament sphenomandibular ligament is derived from which pharyngeal arch first pharyngeal arch because it is mandible no so it is derived from the first pharyngeal arch whatever is related to the mandible they are all derived from the first pharyngeal arch this is embryology and the next one is um, stylo mandibular ligament another one ligament is stylo mandibular ligament stylo means from the styloid process mandible means which part of the mandible this is called the ramus of the mandible this area i said this is called the ramus of the mandible so ramus of the mandible you have the anterior border and a posterior border along the posterior border of the ramus of the mandible only you will be having the ligament attachment which ligament stylo mandibular ligament right posterior border of the ramus of the mandible you have the stylo mandibular ligament and here in the lingula you have the sphenomandibular mandibular ligament stylo mandibular ligament only divides the which gland from which gland submandibular salivary gland from the parotid gland submandibular salivary gland from the parotid gland first i said mylohyoid line divides the sublingual salivary gland from the submandibular salivary gland now i am asking the next question stylo mandibular ligament is here coming here so it only divides the submandibular salivary gland from the parotid gland which is up okay parotid gland so this is your parotid and this is your submandibular so submandibular and parotid are here your stylo mandibular ligament will be crossing over here right this is about the Uh, neck and the other two muscles so, so two muscles only we have covered next is masseter this surface is empty so this lateral surface of the ramus of the mandible gives attachment for the masseter so what is the nerve supply for the masseter masseteric nerve so next question i will ask what is this notch mandibular notch what is the nerve passing through the mandibular notch don't say mandibular nerve this is your masseteric nerve so because masseteric nerve will be coming here and supply the masseter muscle so the lateral part you have the ramus you have the masseter and this is what cor coronoid process this is a coronoid process gives attachment to the next muscle your temporalis because it will be going up so temporalis will be here right this is your temporalis understood so temporalis will be coming here so temporalis will be attached to the coronoid process so anterior border of the coronoid process up to this you will be having the attachment of um, temporalis so temporalis coronoid process up to the anterior border of the coronoid process and the here in the uh, pterygoid fovea you have the lateral pterygoid here you have the lateral surface of the ramus of the mandible you have the lat uh, masseter and inside the medial surface you near the angle you have the medial pterygoid four muscles over and this line you can see no the oblique line oblique line gives attachment for the buccinator buccinator is a muscle which is related to the uh, face which is attached to the near the mouth it is a muscle of facial expression don't say this is the muscle of mastication there is a muscle of facial expression this is the line for the buccinator and this one look at this next most important one this is the mylohyoid line no this look at this this mylohyoid the posterior end of the mylohyoid line gives attachment to the this area gives attachment to the superior constrictor your superior constrictor muscle will be attached here right that is one of the muscle of the pharynx superior constrictor okay right so this is about the muscles so we know the muscles number 1 to genial tubercles genioglossus geniohyoid and this fossa for the digastric anterior belly this is for mylohyoid posterior end you have the superior constrictor and uh, here you have the lateral pterygoid here in the coronoid process you have the temporalis and um, if you see outside you have the uh, masseter and uh, already we know about the medial pterygoid and uh, here uh, oblique line you have the buccinator now what this this groove what is it for inferior alveolar nerve was entering inside no this groove through this groove it comes and it supplies the alveoli and it comes out as important branch called mental nerve 
this mental nerve supplies the muscles uh, surrounding this area you have lot of muscle depressor uh, uh, septi depressor labia inferior so all these muscles are here but we don't want to stress the student by asking all these muscles so the most important muscles only you should remember so this is about mal alveoli the mandible the male the mandible female mandible different some uh, some examiners will ask for that at least you should know this chin is narrow in females and it is broader in males and the most important difference is you could see this angle right uh, and uh, this angle will be everted everted means out it's somewhat uh, projected outside it is called it is in males and it is projected inwards inverted in females right this is the important difference and oh, age difference in the mandible regarding the sockets sockets in old age uh, uh, you will not be having the tooth sockets like this everything will be uh, smooth and this alveolar process margins will be very smooth this is a superior margin and this is the inferior margin along the inferior margin one more question what is the muscle attached along here the inferior margin platysma and the most important one what is the artery lying over here is facial artery so all the anesthetists they feel the facial artery pulse along the lower border of the mandible that is the most important question usually asked that's all about the mandible thank you